In an open world full of different factions, races, and monsters, magical and fighting arts rule the lands and sands of Salazar. Think of a game like a bit of a mix of Kenshi, Mountain Blade, and Dynasty Warriors. We'll be jumping into the journey together of exploring this brutal wasteland and spending a total of 100 days as we attempt to survive in this cruel, brutal world and become the strongest gang on the map. Shout out to XD, they were nice enough to hook me up with not only the game, but also gave me 5 Steam keys to give away to you guys so if you'd like to enter the giveaway to possibly win this game then go to my discord server and join up there there's a few days left on it by the time this video drops so run it up while you can and remember to leave a like and subscribe if you f with a movement now to begin i was going into story mode and i wanted to play the game on hard difficulty yeah i know it's not for the super hard difficulty but it's close enough okay you can at least say i'm trying we then got to select our class and since i'm a fan of playing necromancers and summoners in a lot of video games i selected the spear Spiritmancer class, which gives me the ability to summon shades to fight alongside me. What are shades? I, I don't fucking know. We'll have to find out. <clears throat> I then played Randomize a Mofo until I landed on this. <laughs> I love it. But he looks like he's ready to kill. This is the true face of a demon. The true face of fear. I'll name him Lenny to uh, compensate for his intimidating appearance. We then got to pick some skills. There's a whole bunch of options, but I knew I wanted to get this Silent Tempest skill, which creates a circle of pain, as well as get this Fire Elemental Summon. I don't know what else to get, so I, really, I just got a cheap resource pack for the rest of the points, and now it's time to adventure. The game starts and we're hanging out with our stepsister. Lenny's wife died, so now we He's on round two with a sister now. No, I'm just kidding. He's uh hanging out with her because the rest of the family is dead or something. Before we leave the spawn area, we go into a battle with a monster called Ifrit. We saved two people, so they ended up giving us money and then they left. And now the true game begins. Starting by heading to Redstone Valley, I thought for sure this would be like a mining or stoning area. Well, you know, because of Minecraft, but it's just a bigger desert. <laughs> now we need to run around and find foes to fight. Instantly picking a fight with a bandit group of 20 or so, Lenny and his stepsister would beat down the enemies and claim victory. The main gameplay loop in Sands of Salazar consists of fighting enemies, clearing out points of interest for resources, as well as building diplomatic relationships by going city to city and completing quests. You're also trying to grow an army and get stronger. So one of the first things I did in the game was I stopped by a mount shop to buy a horse. This will make us run 40% faster on the map, which is a huge difference, as it'll help us for the entire playthrough. Now near the end of day two, we made it to West Craig Outpost. There we were able to recruit some Dakan Lancers. Now each squad we recruit, they level up or die depending on our actions. If they don't end up dying, we'll be able to upgrade them and make them even stronger as we go along in the game. Day three would mostly be spent exploring and finding bandits to beat up until we came across a tent and went inside of it. There were 16 enemies, but they were no match for Lenny's gang. They found some tools and finally got their first level up from clearing out the tent. With that, we were able to unlock the shade ability, meaning we'll finally get to figure out what shades are. See, I bet you probably thought you had to wait until then end of a video to figure that one out, eh? Pretty good video, eh? Now it's on to day four, and before we leave, that guy we saved from earlier is back, and he's telling us to meet him over at Paho Ho Lava Void. Now, that location's name sounds, uh, terrifying. If you took Papa and Lava Void out of it, we would have gone there, like, right away. But for now, I'm gonna try and train up. Now, in Sands of Salazar, you also have talents, and these give you a lot of passive bonuses. To start, I'm gonna be trying to spec all my points into the trading tree. At the end of this tree, there's a sweet benefit of getting free weekly resources, which is big. Now, every time we level up, complete a quest, or collect a certain amount of talent shards, we receive a talent point. So it shouldn't take all that long to really reach our goal. Lenny ran around and got a quest from some guy. Then he went into Kata Town and found a woman named Wakata. It seemed like we could recruit her as long as we increase our relationship with her, so we asked her if she has an errand we can run for her, and she would then send us on a quest to deliver a letter to that town that we were at yesterday. So we make our way back over to West Craig Outpost and deliver the letter. This increases our relationship with both of the NPCs involved, and seeing as there's a lot of different possible recruits in this game, we're bound to find plenty of wacky characters. In the middle of day 5, Lenny's group returns to Wakata, and 
this is when we learn we're gonna have to give her a gift to increase her relationship level high enough. So the new quest begins, trying to find cool shit that we can give her. Moving on though, in Redstone Valley, they even have their own kind of dust bandits. Now, they're called the uh, Desert Brotherhood, but they're just as weak and as much of a low level experience sponges as the dust bandits in Kenji are. On day six, it's time to explore some more. We find an old soldier who sits at a flag mourning a lost battle. We tell him to move on and get on with his life and we get a talent point. It's as easy as that, man. Just, just go do it. Then we go to a new city and we find a man begging a woman for help to which she refuses to help or heal him. Even though she's a healing wizard, it's a rule in the lands that unless they're under this white row society, it is illegal to provide healing magic to anyone under any circumstance. Unless it's me in battle to which I can heal and my squad can do whatever the fuck they want. Fuck them. So the sick guy dies and the bad healer cries. Isn't that a sad story? Near the end of day six, we found a tent to which a man says someone stole all of his stuff. So it's going to be up to us to fight the guard dogs and get it all back. Please do not show PETA this part of a video. I'm really starting to like this game and I don't want them to try to get it banned. Day seven was mostly spent grinding against bandits. And then for day eight, we leveled up again and could increase our power level skill set as well as upgrading our Dakin Lancer to the next tier. Lenny was starting to feel like the top shit at this point, so when he came across some guards who were about to slay some citizens, he knew he couldn't let that happen now, could he? The guard would then offer Lenny 200 Utar to look the other way, but Lenny knows combat is much more valuable. And besides, I mean, if they got 200 Utar to give them, then they probably got more if, you know, we kill them and rob them. <laughs> That'll be the smart move, you know, uh, at least in this universe. So after beating up the guards, the citizens then offered to join our group, which then gave us some more money as well as some mercenary swordsmen. On day nine, I found the home of a flame disciples, but I had to leave since there's no option to fight them at this point. So the rest of the day would just be spent exploring and looking for bandits to grind XP from. On day 10, Lenny's group went into a cave and found a new enemy called Grunts. These are gnarly looking trolls, pretty gross. I mean, they almost took us down too, but to be honest, we won and then escaped with plenty of loot. On day 11, we reached level 6 and we were starting to get more strong as well as have more skills and powers at our disposal. Now, Lenny was feeling really cocky, so he sent his group into a level 8 cave to which everyone would be slaughtered by bloodthirsty wolves. Not good, bro. There are like 30 of them, and like Lenny was running for his life. I spam some healing orbs and items in attempts to save Lenny, and one by one, we just started killing the wolves. Fuck them. If they can't beat him, Lenny will beat him. He doesn't need an army. Once he was able to get the fire guy on the field, it was pretty easy, and then we won the battle. On the flip side, this killed most of the people in our army, so I upgraded the swordsman to heal them. But my thorn shooter, he's just gonna have to be a gene and survive all on his own until I can upgrade him again. On day 12, we arrived at Prism Rock Village and began a quest to take a caravan to a neighboring city and protect it until it gets there. This was a really easy quest because uh, no bandits ran into us. On day 13, we were at Triptych Rock, another city and looking for a quest. We got a loan shark quest basically to go get back some money that this girl lent a dude named McCann. Then on day 14, we stopped at Kata Town and found Wakata. Lenny finally found something to give her for a gift, so after we did that, she would then join Lenny's party. Characters like Lenny and Wakata are super strong, so filling up our team with them is crucial, as well as it helps increase her power level by a lot. Lenny's group then arrived back at West Craig Outpost by day 15 and bought a new squad of troops, as well as accepted a quest from a village noble we had to go to some bandits and get back a hostage but it's across the map so you know that's gonna take a bit no rush Lenny and his group saved some more prisoners from some guards that were attacking them so this further increased the strength of his growing army on day 16 Lenny's group ran past a camp that looked pretty good it was really set up and there's all these like nice colors there so there had to be something going on and of course it turns out a woman was actually hosting a tournament for a very valuable prize so to get in we need to answer three questions Questions. Now, I spent like a good three to five minutes, like at least a minute or two on each question. And sure enough, I ended up getting them all wrong. So this uh, denied me entry to the tournament and I, the quest was just failed. <laughs> Alright, this really fucking sucked. So I reloaded and then I went back and I guessed randomly. And sure enough, I got them all right. We only had one fight to do, so we then queue up for a wacky camel rider solo. Lenny slayed the camel man and then claimed victory. But after that battle, a big guy comes up and he's on a horse. And he's talking all sorts of talks of betrayal and bad things. So I felt really bad for him in a way, but... 
I knew we'd have to kill him to protect the treasure because I didn't want him to take it. So Lenny opted to help the tournament ladies group and laid the smack down to the man and his horses. After this, he would flee back into the desert and the treasure is now ours. But unfortunately, it's just some shitty fake combat gear and it doesn't really sell for a lot of money. And in exchange for helping out that lady, we're now outlawed and wanted in a call territory. Turn off the playthrough strong, fuck them. Day 16 and 17 would be mainly spent just fighting roaming bandit groups. Then by day 18, we recruited some local falcons into the group. These were sick, man. I was so excited to have falcons in the group and train them up. I really wanted them to get big, but like in the first battle, they... They kind of suck, they got murked, and right away, like, I had one of them die, so there's only one falcon left. Then, near the end of day 18, we got to the North Craig outpost and found the bandits who we needed to tell to release the hostages. They wouldn't do it without 1,000 Utahs, so instead of that, we went into battle, sending my other beloved eagle to the grave and killing the eagle squad. On day 19, we're on the run again, looking for trouble, and after crushing some bandits, we leveled up everyone to level 8. We continue grinding through most of day 20 with the main goal of leveling up and promoting our squads. On day 21, we got back to West Craig Outpost and handed in a quest for the hostage, and then went back to fighting Riff Raff. Lenny's group grinded until day 24, and then I decided we would continue pursuing the main quest, which requires us to travel to the next map. There's multiple maps in the game, by the way. I only realized this at, like, <laughs> this moment of a playthrough. We then arrived in Amaranth Town, and everyone seems to be standing around this tied-up wizard. Apparently, because he used magic to heal someone, he needs to die. They're pretty not cool, right? But <laughs> the guard there, he's even like, Oi, right, like, you know, he saved my life, eh? And still, the wizard, he he's, uh, needs to die. So Lenny jumps in and decides to pick a fight with the town. Now, this actually wasn't too bad. Only 15 people had to die for us to save the one person. So after doing our good deed of a day, we then met Nassant. And Lenny told him to run away before the guards get him again. Then we would head to a corner of a town to meet an old friend. When we got there, I really thought, because of the way that Larry and Hooknose were like communicating, that this was going to be a fight. But I guess they're just really close friends who are hard on each other. Lenny wants to know where someone is, but Hulk knows won't give him us any information without doing like a quest for him, of course. So we head out of the city, and then you have to go search for some dude that owes him like a thousand Utah. On day 25, Lenny ran into a bandit camp and decided to send a group in to attack. Now there were like 50 bandits here, so a few people did fall, but after a fierce and close battle, we were able to take down the bandits and destroy their camp. Our reward once we got back to the map was a bunch of loose loot just ready to pick up and collect. Then on day 26, we found the guy who owed Hook Nose money. But once we talked to him, he said he only owes 500 and Hook Nose wants interest. He gave us some sap story and since Lenny's making money, you know, pop out of thin air, decided we'd just take 500 and offer to cover the rest. Near the end of the day, we get back to Hook Nose and give them 1,000 Utah. He just tells Lenny to go to a town named Doomstorm, like, <laughs> pretty helpful. Now we had enough talent points to give a super passive upgrade for free but i need to spec into other sides of this tree that way i could work towards things like the squad size and increasing our map speed so lenny would spend the next few days until day 30 basically beating up local bandits and gaining levels and resources to promote his squads we were almost at level 10 now and we recruited some pythons which i really wanted to level up so we could promote them like big pythons that'd be fucking sweet on day 30 we went into a snowy map but kind of scared me and I didn't want the pythons to die so I went back to the desert. I found a guard who had a quest to go on so I went to go check out the redstone mine which surely you know it has to have some sort of minecraft thing in it. You all know how I feel about minecraft. Day 31 hit and our army is pretty big now. We have three main characters and like 40 squad members. It's insane already. Most of the desert is like terrified of us. Most of the bandits just run away when they see us and while at this point we could maybe invade a city I know it would risk anger the surrounding factions and NPCs. On day 32, we found homeless people and gave them 50 Utar, which gave us two talent shards. We were now only two points away from hitting our goal in the trading tree. We then went south into Umbra Cliffs and started exploring. Now, I was really nervous about losing our entire party to some kind of swamp monster, so I ran back to the desert to grind. Alright, I'm just not doing it. I want everybody to die. I care about them. I had plenty of side quests and excuses and stuff to do in that area as well. But all jokes aside, I did want to get a few things done so we could get the talent points fast. Day 34 was mainly spent
spent exploring the rest of the map and clearing out caves and camps for loot. Same with day 35, there was just a ton of random squads running around, so it was really easy to level up fast during this time. By day 36, Lenny's group went back into Umbra Cliffs and began to explore this area, first by taking down a pretty weak bandit camp. So this made me think, oh, Lenny must be like over leveled or something, so you know, my confidence just skyrocketed. And after another day of clearing caves, camps, and roaming bandit squads, we arrived in our first town. I didn't spend too much time here as after one more battle, we finally had enough talent points to get the wealthy passive. This gives us 300 utar, 100 wood, and stone per week for the rest of a playthrough. At the end of the day, we came across a heroic statue that had a test for Lenny. I mean, this was 1v1. Lenny, the wizard, he would fight a warmonger boss with sword as big as tree. This was really unfair, man, but luckily we had healing orbs to save us and we ended up winning the battle. This gave Lenny the strong traveling harp, which uh really isn't that good. Like the harp we had equipped on Wakata was a bit better in my opinion, so this kind of sucked. Near day 39, Lenny started running around and talking to all the NPCs who had quest markers above their heads. Right now our squads are pretty stacked, but I need resources to upgrade. So our main goal right now is going to be to get rich ASAP. That way we don't get squad wiped before we do the upgrading. I also started a timed quest to find all six statues on the map, which I decided I'll try to do on my own without searching it up on Google. This might have been like a really bad idea. Either way, we then found a group of senators and this was an even worse idea. <laughs> they immediately charged our group and killed a bunch of our guys, including our beloved pythons. Yet another lost dream. Day 40 and 41 was spent exploring and killing whatever we could really find. On day 42, we arrived in our Jill camp and recruited some brown bears into our squad. These guys I really wanted to keep alive, seeing as all of our ever pets have all died. And if I promote the bears, they'll go into chief brown bears or big brown bears. They're even stronger than the small bears, of course, so that'd be sick. Then on day 43, we found a scary looking door that was on fire. So nope, I dipped out of there. I wasn't touching that. It said level 16 and we're about a level 11, so <laughs> no way, man. Day 44 was spent exploring and I found the fifth statue there and there was only one more. But I think likely it was at the start of a map. So I just kept searching everywhere for it. By the end of day 45, I gave up on a statue pipe dream and I decided to go back to killing and looting since I had plenty of squads that could be upgraded, but I really lacked resources right now. On day 47, Lenny found an arena where there has been a tournament. Where there has been a tournament. Why did, I, why did I write that like that? Where a tournament was being hosted. So Lenny would enter the tournament and he started dominating everyone. One by one, everybody went down. To be fair, they were all like farmers and like townsfolk and shit so it wasn't really that fair of them versus Lenny the wizard but we kept on getting talent shards as well as money for winning each round so I kept going until the last one which was equally as easy and this actually gave us a cool useful item like good shit man we would then spend the rest of the day battling random groups and exploring until late day 48 where we arrived in Black Bog Village so everywhere that he went he was just buying out the entire supply of all the wood and stone then we hit day 50 holy shoot we're halfway there guys let's go <laughs> Lenny would beat up some more local bandits until moving back into Umbra cliffs where we would then attack a bandit camp that I saved for once we had leveled up I also had enough resources to get the big brown bears leveled up so this is sweet these guys are much bigger now and they just soak up damage which is great day 51 was spent killing bandits and raiding places but the enemies here are much weaker now compared to before and they're barely giving us any experience so I knew Lenny had to migrate on day 52 we we went into Redstone Valley and went into that Redstone Mine that Vagard a few weeks ago told us about. Unfortunately, there wasn't any Minecraft type stuff in there, so that kind of sucked, but uh, we did beat up some cave dwellers and take their loot. After clearing the cave, I returned to Vagard to complete the quest, which gave us 500 experience and a talent point. On day 53, Lenny finally decided to go to that ho-ho place. There he has to meet up with Malak, where apparently we're going to be invading a secret base owned by the Inference. Of course, this was a trap though. Malak was working with a monster in order to help it and lured us into a 1v1 fight with him. But this wasn't too hard because Lenny had his shades and his fire monster to help, so we had no problem knocking it down. But after we, like, defeat the monster, he's somehow still standing, and I'm like, oh man, that's one of these. You know, he attacks Malik, he attacks a witch, he attacks us, knocks everyone out. We wake up to that other girl we saved at the start of a game, and she's standing in front of us. She claims she slayed the monster, and she needs her help to discover the truth. Lenny then leaves the lava void and heads over to Redstone Valley again. We need 
needed to travel into Crying Rock to complete a quest, so by day 55, Lenny and his army attacked a camp of Ifrit worshippers. On day 56, Lenny arrived at Ember Camp Mines, to which he needed to save some miners who were struck in the cave. He soloed a bunch of guys, and this battle was actually really close, so we got overwhelmed at the very start, but thanks to having all the skills and the healing orbs we've obtained so far, it realistically it made it a breeze to clear the cave. At the end of the cave, there was this wizard boss, who actually took a little bit to take down. He was pretty strong, but Lenny's a G and he managed to do it. Then on day 57, we found a traveling soldier who Lenny decided to challenge to a duel. And this guy was the first guy to take Lenny down. He was strong as hell, he was riding on a horse, so Lenny and his minions just didn't really stand a chance. After that embarrassment, I went to Redstone Keep and gave this muscle man a gift, and he joined our party right away. So far, I had a wizard, an assassin, a healer, and now a brute melee character. So the party was looking pretty nice now, in my opinion. On day 58, we were back in the Umbra Cliffs to clear out some bandits and grind all the way up until day 60. This is when the group took a stop in Fleur. Lenny decided to accept a quest to guide a caravan. I didn't read how far they were gonna have to go. We went to the next map and fought one group of bandits with the caravan, and then it took like three fucking days to get to the city, man. It was insane. So on day 64, Lenny and his group went into Twin Luna Valley as we needed to get the actual desert map to continue the main story. There were also way stronger enemies around this area, so I knew that if we spent a few days hopping from battle to battle, we'd gain a lot of experience and loot. On day 67, we then took down a bandit camp for a bunch of resources, and I found some giant worms to fight. These guys are strong as hell. They took down some of our army, but thankfully we got healers now, so we were pretty much good. On day 69, someone else was selling brown bears so I jumped at that opportunity to recruit them. Now we had two squads of brown bears. I was fucking stoked. I was like half a that's like half a dozen bears to fight with us. <laughs> On day 70 Lenny went into a cave with his companions and luckily we didn't find any enemies at all. By the end of day 71 Lenny and his group arrived at the West Okana Desert and began to make their way towards their next quest. Lenny's group arrived in Dune Storm and there's a bunch of thug looking guys. Now they ask Lenny if he's selling his stuff sister to which Lenny of course punches the man in the face. The guy's all beat up now so he sends his gang after us but after we win that battle because we got them eaten by bears and we now must loaf about for like two days until the leader shows his face. Lenny and his army continued grinding off the local bandit groups who were starting to match up with us. They weren't killing us but we were having 50 versus 50 person and bear battles so we've come a long way from just Lenny and his stepsister. On day 74 we return to town and find the leader who tells us to meet him to the east. Of course though, he leaves a bunch of his thugs there for us to easily dominate. On day 75, we meet up with a leader who ran away to some kind of golden shrine. Now he tells us we need to sneak into a library to figure out what we want. On top of this, I unlocked a final talent for squads, meaning we could have as many squads on the team as the game would allow us now. I decided to go back into Twin Luna Valley. I mean, since the desert was filled with really strong enemies, I didn't want anyone to die off, so it just made more sense to me to finish some quests in that area. Lenny and his group spent the next five days recruiting new squads to the army as well as grinding levels and loot. On day 80 we attacked a really big bandit camp and surprisingly we did take it down. Now during a the battle they killed a bunch of our troops because this was a 60 versus 90 but seeing as we only lost like 10 or so that really isn't that bad. On day 82 Lenny found a girl named Nora who he hired purely based on personality. Now we had a squad of like five top G's plus an army of mofos. Nora is already max level which is level 20 and that's fucking sweet. Everybody else still is a little bit under leveled though, so we decided to grind until day 83 where we would go back into West Okana Desert to go find that underground library. I tried to go into local towns, but I couldn't go into most of them because remember that fight with the big dude of a tournament lady near the start of a video? Well, yeah, this uh, is his territory, so Lenny is a wanted outlaw, and this makes it pretty hard for us to go anywhere around here. Lenny tried to sneak into one of the cities, but he had to knock out a bunch of guards before he was able to get in. I mean, we had a long way to go to get to where the library was, but on day 86, we would finally arrive. Now, since the library was guarded, we would have to wait until nighttime where Lenny would sneak into the library and then knock out all the guards until he found what he was looking for. This was a document relating to his death. It turns out a powerful wizard, a different wizard named Zarathustra. It turns out he might actually 
be responsible for Lenny's death and power reset, as it reveals a conversation he had in which it's obvious that the main concern is Lenny becoming possibly stronger than Zara. So Lenny then left the library and now had to search for the ruins of an old temple. He would find it on day 87 and there he spoke to a desert witch who attempted to kill him but she didn't really get that far. And now we had to go find Isra, who was just a map over. Lenny and his group would travel over there, and in between, he was fighting like the Church of Radiance and different bandit groups. And then on day 90, he would end up meeting with Isra, to which she revealed to us she is in fact the princess of the old empire. And her name's actually Aleda. She tells us we need to go into this cave, so we head in, and there's like plenty of monsters inside. Surprisingly though, uh, none of them wanted to fight us, like most of them could be easily avoided. Other than literally these three scorpions in one group, they charged at us, but other than that, it was like nothing. We then arrive at River Temple, where Lydia explains that humans kind of stole the land from the Ifrit. So there are some people who are attempting to help them, but since Ifrit feed off magic, they're pretty much enemies to humans. But she's trying to say that not all of them are like bad, so we'll see shortly. We then go into a mirage where we follow her as a child and see village folks saying they should kill her and she's a witch. <laughs> I mean, Holy Okran, man, like, are people fucked? I know it's like the 1100s or something, but come on, man, circling a little girl and talking about killing her, that's crazy talk. At the end of a mirage, we got a special scimitar that the princess sent us in to get. And now that we had that, we had to find her a few maps over, but this time, we had to wait like seven days. So for the next seven days, Lenny and his group stayed in Twin Luna Valley and grinded levels and loot to become as strong as possible. A week of grinding would go by, and near the end of day 98, it was finally time to meet the princess. Now she was like two maps over when I realized this, so I knew if I was going to do this quest quick before day 100 was up, we'd have to run fast as hell. So Lenny and his group traveled directly to where she was, two or three maps over, and on day 100, we would meet her at the portal in Umbra Cliffs. This is where we got teleported to an Ifrit camp. We had to attempt to sneak by all the Ifrit and get to the end, and this wasn't really too hard. I mean, they had this like soup you drink and it makes you invisible, but of course, when we got to the end, that's where we got found. Lenny and the princess both fought off a group of Ifrit demons and would secure victory over the camp, but then a Void Master appears. This guy just looks scary as hell, like he looks like an insane bass bottle just waiting to happen. There's no way this dude is just a normal NPC, <laughs> he's definitely a boss battle. It turns out the wizards on the outside who brought us into the camp, they're tempted to destroy the camp through the barrier, so the Void Master is pissed. He somehow captures us in some kind of a blood mist, and we awake in a ruined cave. It is there that Lenny speaks to the short Ifrit from before, to which we learn that not all Ifrits are bad. This Ifrit is kind of uh, nice, and he wants like humans and Ifrits to unite. But of course, this is a lot to ask for. But if anyone's gonna be the man you gotta ask, you know it's gotta be Lenny. The princess was hurt, and we had a group of monsters just closing in on us. So Lenny would summon his shades and his fire elemental, and one by one killed each of the demons. Lenny beat the demons, and then both of them would leave the shattered world. And this is where the princess tells us we need to negotiate with a void master. As after that whole ordeal, chances are that he's probably not too happy that the human wizards tried to destroy them in their camp. But with that, it was now day 100. 101 and we had spent 100 days in Sands of Salzar. We went from nothing to something like really fast and we now have a really strong army. I didn't even touch a lot of things in the game like taking over cities or other late game features so if you'd like to see a part 2 or more adventures for myself and Lenny make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I'm still a pretty small channel I'm at like 4.5k when this goes up and it took me like a lot of effort to make this video this week so commenting and saying some good stuff means a lot to me. Make sure you check Check out the Discord server for that giveaway and for a cool place to hang out, as well as check the description to follow me on my other social medias. But as always, thank you guys all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.